I guess good morning, everyone. It's still morning for the next few minutes. So I'm from Modiface. Now, some of you might have known and, and heard about us. But essentially, we provide AR technology for beauty brands. So here are two examples uh, of our uh, partners, Laneige and Avon. They both have apps that on, their, on people's live video, we can show what someone looks like with makeup or, or you know, a certain skincare or a hair product. But the core tracking and the simulations, all of that is powered by Modiface. So what we're finding out today is that at every point that a beauty brand interacts with the beauty brand's customers, AR can have a positive impact. So we find, for example, in mobile apps like Sephora's, which we power, having the ability to try on products actually helps engagement, sales, and many other parameters. In on Smashbox's website, for example, where you can, on your um, webcam, you can try out products on your video. Again, impact on conversion, sales, and just overall engagement. And in stores, more and more we're finding magic mirrors where you can actually see your own face but with makeup being applied, it's so much easier than having to apply your lipstick in, in, physically in real life. So this technology has become quite popular. But it wasn't always the case. When we started 10 years ago, Modiface, um, our first application was actually with um, Allergan for skincare simulation. Just waiting for the slide to... Go next. So we partnered and started in 2007 with Allergan to simulate Botox. And then from there, every few years, we kept listening and understanding what were the brands that actually needed technology and what was their feedback. Back then, you could only upload 2D photos. And you had to calibrate points. You didn't have the live video capability. But more and more, we saw that there were cases and certain implementations that made sense for beauty brands. A few years ago, we started working with brands, and we realized how important it is to actually get the finish right for a certain product. So a red uh, lipstick that is more shiny looks entirely different than one that's more matte. So understanding that and being able to simulate that realistically makes a world of difference, both for users and, and for brands. So three years ago, we launched the first live video makeup simulation tool with Sephora in, in some of their stores as a test. And from there, we realized that more and more engagement, conversions, and sharing, all the metrics that would normally matter um, kept becoming better and better. So today, Modiface powers AR experiences for 75 of the top 100 beauty brands. Some of these, like L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, um, uh, Claire All, and many others you might have heard about, many of them we haven't yet announced. But overall, beauty brands are realizing that AR works. It, it does make an impact on sales, on, on engagement. So there are two things that we've learned that make a big impact uh, for brands. One is the ability to customize. What works well for Sephora doesn't always work well for L'Oreal. The brands are different, the users are different, and understanding those differences is quite key. The second is realism. Now, we didn't really understand this realism 10 years ago when we got started, but it is extremely important for someone to trying an AR experience for a brand to believe that that's a real depiction of what the shade would look like in real life. If it looks gimmicky, if it's for fun, it could be engaging. People may spend time, but they may not use that to actually purchase products. So if you're buying a product, you need to believe that simulation will end up looking like that in real life. So this realism starts with our ability to track the face. So we've built and patented a, an in-house facial tracking engine that detects every single feature, including the contour of the lips and the eyes, with detailed precision. That's, of course, important. You don't want lipstick to be on someone's nose. From there, we have the ability to render the shade in a way that it looks realistic. But shade rendering is a very difficult problem. The thing is, the same person, which all of these images, all of these lips are the same lipstick of the same person taken at one minute intervals in different lighting conditions. As you can see, the color looks entirely different in one setting versus a different setting. So understanding how do you render the color of a shade so it looks believable and it matches the real life version is, is a very difficult problem. So a few years ago, we realized that there is a way to actually make some advancement in this, which is to look at an image and look at the entire data you can extract from an image, including the contrast in the eyes, the shine on the hair, the, the um, white balance in the background. Using any of these by themselves, it doesn't give you a lot of information. But using all of it, you can get a basic sense of the lighting of the environment based on which we can adjust the shade rendering. 
Let me show you a demo. So in this example, the image on the right is using our light field rendering that we estimate the light field based on that we adjust the shade. And no matter where she is, the color is adjusting to look realistic. If you use the static colors you see in the middle, in some cases it looks neon, in other cases it looks uh, quite dark. So the ability to adjust that shade and make it realistic has been a key um, step in getting more and more beauty brands to believe that this works for them and actually increasing their sales. So what, that's where we are today. What we are seeing more and more is that our AR applications that are being widely used, they generate a significant amount of data. But that data doesn't of, often doesn't get used. So more and more brands are interested in using the ability to process that data and make use of that data, which is using really a different forms of AI combined with AR to make truly personalized experiences. So I want to share with you a few examples of what brands are doing today that combines in some ways AR and AI. The first is Estee Lauder. So we've been working with their uh, few Estee Lauder brands, including Smashbox. So what you see here essentially is on Smashbox's website, you can go and you can experience any product that Smashbox sells on your live video or photo on any platform, so on mobile, desktop. We've also done the same for Estee Lauder's uh, flagship brand, Estee Lauder. So here, again on their site, directly on the product page, you can actually try out any product that Estee Lauder sells within certain categories and see what it would look like on your own video. One of the things about this is that it creates a significant amount of data. We know what each shopper, what, what shades they've tried on but never bought, what shades they tried on that added to the basket. So we, we know a lot of information about the user and what they're doing in the application. So often, one of the things that we're doing is making sense of that data and understanding for each user what is the best combination of products to be recommended, what is the best shades to be shown to them or suggested to them based on their um, facial image, their skin tone, and also based on what they've done inside the app. The next example is Sephora, who's been one of our longest partners. Just today, they announced a new version of the Sephora Virtual Artist, which is an application that allows on in many platforms, in stores, on web, and in their mobile app, to try out any product in several categories that's sold in Sephora. So customers can try out lipsticks, they can try out eyeshadows, um, um, different blushes, all under live video, all with exact precision on the simulation to match the real life product as closely as possible. And all the products they try, of course, they can buy inside the app as well. So one of the things that Sephora, we've done with them is actually in store implementations. So this is an example of a mirror that Sephora's installed in different locations that you can take any physical product and tap it and immediately you can try it on your live video. So it's a mirror-based AR experience, but again, any product that you see in stores in certain categories you can just tap and try directly in store on your live reflection. The next thing we've done with them that's been quite interesting is the idea of live tutorials. So what you can do is not only see what it look, would look like on your own face, but see how you could actually achieve that look. Normally people watch YouTube tutorials, but in this case they can actually watch the tutorial directly on their own video. So they can see a very personalized set of instructions that shows step by step how the, the prime and the prep steps should be applied, how the eyeshadow should be applied and, and blended out. So exact instructions, and, and they're customized for the user's face. So the way the eye, eyeliner and eyeshadow is recommended is really customized for the user, knowing what their eye shape and what their face shape is like. Another example of a tutorial is one for brows. So I'm having a lot of trouble with this clicker. It's jumping two slides every time. Um, let's see if I can get it to work this time to get on the brows. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Well, 
So trust me, the brow tutorial is um, quite interesting. It gives you a scientific idea of what your face shape is and analyzes all the different parameters and then recommends how your brows should be styled based on your face shape. There you see the same idea, but for the idea for, um, um, for sculpting the face. So giving a sculpted look, it tells you exactly how different products should be applied and how they should be blended on your live video to achieve a certain look. Now all of these technologies we have, we have the ability to directly live cast from the app. So often makeup artists are actually using this technology to, um, on their Facebook or YouTube page to show their users how different looks can be achieved by using an AR application. It's really a great way to experience different products without actually having to be trying them on your own face and it's much more efficient. Next, one of the problems that Sephora had was the ability to search for products. So we've worked on a technology that you can scan any photo and we extract the makeup and you can try it on your live video. So here you see that, for example, we're using an iPad and taking an image, um, of just taking an image with makeup, so that makeup is essentially peeled off digitally and then applied on someone's live video. So you can, whether it's a friend or it's something you find in a magazine, you can try out any look, customized and matched your own face. It even works with very complex patterns, so if you have a multicolored shadow, you can extract that and you can try it on. Even a polka dot eye shadow, it's essentially scanning the look and letting you try that on. And all of these could be matched to products, so you can actually find out what product would actually give you that look. So one way um, that we've actually made this quite available for all users is that we launched this in a chatbot. So in a chatbot experience with Sephora, you could actually submit a photo directly while conversing with Sephora. And you could try out any lip product that they have, or you could actually submit images that would be inspirational. So a celebrity image or a product image. And based on that, we can color match the, what lipstick the person's wearing in the image you submitted. Match it to Sephora products that you could either buy or end up directly trying on. Now, there are a lot of other examples. Um, Cody, for example, is using quite a bit of deep learning in making a personalized recommendation engine. Um, and um, other companies, including for skincare simulation, um, like Vichy and Allergan. I'll end on by mentioning just four key notes of interesting things we're looking on. This one actually interests me. Every digital mirror that we have to date is actually based on a, a single digital screen that your left eye and your right eye are seeing the exact same thing. We've been working on a mirror where it's a true mirror where your left and right eye are actually seeing different images with parallax, but objects are embedded in the reflection image. So for example, here, when this person is looking at her reflection, ah. so she's looking into an actual mirror, but there's an object embedded in that reflected field of view. So that those glasses are actually floating in that reflected space, and they move in and out along with her face. This technology is in, is in quite an early form, but it has a significant amount of potential for the eventual real mirrors where people can see that depth. There are a few other ideas, including conversational interfaces for speech, and as we announced earlier today, the ability to do full gaze tracking inside our applications. So finding out where someone is looking at in, in these applications and invoking different experiences based on someone's view. So if they look at a certain product name or a logo, and based on that invoking different experiences or ads, um, this is something that we're very much excited about. And that's the end. Thank you. All right, so um, I'm sure we have time for one question, uh, a quick question, anyone? Really? Commercially available now. Hey, there we go. Yes, and widely deployed. Okay. Yes. Commercially available now and widely deployed. Yep, yeah, just download the Sephora app. They have quite a few of these features. 